What's up guys, Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on animating objects in Unreal Engine by animating movement of objects. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so last week, we talked a little bit about animating a camera moving inside of Unreal Engine. This week, I wanna animate objects and other things as well. So first thing we're gonna do is we need to add a cinematic sequence to our level. And so the way that we can do that is we can go to the top of the page. Notice how there's an option in here for cinematics and there's an option here for add level sequence. What that's gonna do is that's going to basically allow us to create an animation object that's going to store movements of objects inside of our scene. And for me, I've created a folder in my content um, in my project called cinematics and we're just gonna call this object movement right here and we're gonna click on the save button. And so basically what that's done is that's created an object in here, which is basically called a level sequence. So that's basically an animation sequence object that you can access inside of the sequencer. If your sequencer doesn't pop up, you can go to window cinematics and turn on the sequencer. And so if you remember last week, we manage a lot of these movements using keyframes. So basically what a keyframe is, is we basically tell Unreal Engine what to do with something over time. And so the first thing we need to do is let's take our cone object that we have right here and move we want to track that object in our sequencer. So to do that, what we can do is we can click on the little plus button right here. And notice how there's an option in here for actor to sequencer. That's going to allow us to select an actor that's inside of our level. In this case, we want to select the cone. And so what that's going to do is that's going to bring our cone in right here. And so if we look at this, notice what this does is this gives us information about the cone that we can then keyframe. So for example, right now, what we've got is we've got a cone um, with nothing in here. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna tell this our starting location. And so we can tell it our starting location by adding a keyframe at zero seconds. And by the way, if this doesn't show up in seconds for you, if it shows up in frames, um, you can click on this little drop down right here and just click on the option for show time as seconds right here. And so now what we wanna do is we want to basically set a transformation. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna keyframe either the entire transformation in here or the location. If you just want this to slide across your screen, you can just do the location like this. So if I click on the location right here, notice how that adds a little dot in here at zero seconds. That means at zero seconds, this cone is gonna be sitting right here. However, at five seconds, I want this object to have moved across my scene, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this object over here, and then I'm going to add a second keyframe right here. So if I click on this now, if I play this cinematic, so if I click on the play button right here, notice how our cone is going to move over those five seconds from this point to this point. And so let's say we wanted this to be a little bit more complex. I could take this keyframe and I could drag it to two and a half seconds right here or something close to that. And then I could add another keyframe at five seconds. So at the end of this scene, I want this cone to now have moved over here. So what I can do is I can keyframe that location again. So now if I was to play this, what that's gonna do is that's going to have my cone move from here to here and then it's gonna move from here to here. Not only can you do this for things like your location, you can do this for other things as well. So let's say for example, we had a second cone in here, right? So we're gonna add this cone right here. And for cone two, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we add it to our sequencer right here. So we're gonna add cone two to our sequencer. Well, for this one, I want this to be kind of up in the air. So I'm gonna keyframe my location and I'm just gonna leave it there. But then I also want this to rotate. And whoops, I need to make sure that I keyframe the first spot, not the last spot. Uh, probably won't matter in this case. But in this situation, what I want is I want this to rotate around the central point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm going to adjust the rotation of my object like this. So at one second, I want this to have rotated 180 degrees and I can keyframe that rotation separately. Now I do need to make sure that at the beginning of this that I keyframe it at a value of zero. So now notice how if I click play like this, it's going to rotate that cone 
right there. So at one second, I've got it at 180 degrees. I could also at two seconds, just keyframe it to 360 degrees and get rid of this keyframe right here. So at two seconds, I want this to be at 360 degrees and I'm going to keyframe that rotation. Well, now, if you look at this, notice that this object is rotating inside of the 3D space like this. Now, there's a lot of other interesting things we could do with this. So, for example, um, with this object selected, if we click on this button right here, this is going to pull up a curve editor. And the curve editor is going to give you the ability to do some interesting things. Like, for example, right now, um, and I'll drag this down a little bit. But, for example, right now, this rotation animation just kind of stops. Well, this gives you options to do things like um, you can set this to cycle. So for example, if I was to set this to cycle, or let's go ahead and set it to ping pong for right now. What that's going to do is that's gonna set this up where it automatically like repeats that animation. So in this case, right, even though we set this up to rotate 360 degrees, if I was to click the play button, now it's gonna rotate and then it's gonna rotate back. So it's gonna move smoothly between those two points. So you can set this up so that movements repeat and other things like that. I don't wanna to get too far into the curve editor right now, but just know there's some advanced editing features that are built into this as well. All right, so the problem right now is if I click on the play button, nothing is happening, right? So um, what we wanna do is we wanna set this up so that when we click the play button, this is actually going to run. So we wanna make sure that we've selected our object movement level sequence object inside of the actual viewport right here. But then we wanna go into our blueprints and we wanna open our level blueprint. So we're gonna open this up. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna set this so when we click on play, it's going to play our animation. So we don't need the event tick for right now. What we wanna do is we wanna right click and as long as you have that object movement selected in your other window, it's gonna show up here. We wanna create a reference to that object, right? So we've referenced that object right here. But now we need to tell it what to do with this. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to click and drag out of this right here. We wanna go down and we wanna find the option for play sequence player. So basically what it's going to do is when we click on play, it's going to play the um, the animation that's contained inside of that sequence player, right? So we're gonna click on play right here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give us two windows, right? It's gonna give us the nodes right here, which you don't really need to worry about. And then it's gonna give me a play right here, right? So the only other thing we need to do is we need to drag the event begin play into this node right here. So it's a very simple blueprint. And then we can just click on the save button in order to save this in our scene. Well now, what's gonna happen is if I click on play, that animation is going to play inside of my scene right here. And notice how it'll play for however many seconds you have in here, and then it's just going to kind of reset. So we're gonna go ahead and click on stop right here. But if we were to click on play again, it's going to play again. And notice how things like your camera location is going to affect this. So in this situation, right, we've got our player controller that's looking at this. So if we move our player controller and we rotate it a little bit, our camera view is going to be coming from that location. So you can adjust your camera actor location in order to um, show this animation inside of your scene. All right, and then one other thing, if you decide that you wanna do this, and I'm going to move my camera over so that I have a better viewport, but, or a better view of what's going on in my scene, but if you wanna export this to an animation file, um, there's a couple different options for doing that. So you can go down to this render this to a video or image frame sequence. If you click the drop down, notice how there's options for movie render queue and movie scene capture. So if you do the movie render queue, what it's going to do is it's going to basically render this out and export it. And notice how we have options in here for um, JPEG sequence, or if we pick another setting right here, we can export this to something else instead. Now, the only thing that's weird to me, and maybe I just don't understand this, is this is only giving me options to export like image sequences, which I would then have to stitch together. So this will give us like uh, an image per frame, which this one has like 150 frames. So you can do that and it'll go through and it'll actually render this out. Or you can also pick the drop down right here for movie scene capture. What movie scene capture is going to do, and it is marked as legacy, but what it's going to do is you can click on this and this is going to allow you to export this to either an image sequence or an AVI video. 
right here. So if we export this to AVI video, it's just gonna be a video file. And you can adjust things like your resolution. So for example, I'm gonna do a 1920 by 1080, as well as some other things about the video. But if I click on the option for capture movie, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through, it's gonna ask us to save, and then it's going to actually capture that video right here. And you can't actually see it, but it is working on it right here. And then it's gonna say capture finished. You can click on the option to open that capture window, which is basically gonna open the window that you exported it to. And in this case, this was my animation sequence two right here. If I click on this and play it, you can see how the animation of my scene has been exported to a video file. So you can use this in order to quickly export animations from Unreal Engine as well. All right, so let me know what other kinds of animations you'd like to create inside of Unreal Engine, as well as if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.